they're I mean when we need them they're right there and so um I've just been blessed with we've been blessed with such a supportive family that you know how does it work with your business like well uh for the first and second transplant I didn't have my own business but oh, I was really? lucky enough to work for a group of guys that were just super great guys and supportive and um kind of could cover for me while I was yeah. away nice. you know but I remember one time so it was like my first transplant and I was speaking at the church and these ladies came up to me and you had just built their house and they were like we didn't even know that he was going through what he was going through with you because he just he's so he just perseveres he knows what he needs to do and gets the job done and I mean I know probably right now a lot of your clients have no clue about me <laughs> and like because he just gets the job done there's and- a couple that there's a few that do um, some people that have moved into their homes that follow you and and, oh. uh, and ask you yeah know. but i just but, you, you don't know. let it affect your work but i don't really. talk about it anymore. and what's great is he um he can work from anywhere so he's allowed to he and he has a great team yeah. um that helps him and so i mean it, he really just he knows how to do it you all just <laughs> put your head down and you do it that's yeah. how we live he keeps me alive and keeps his business alive and oh he, just, he just do it and the children and the children well now it's like gosh they're kind of raising themselves <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're, fine. Yeah. they're good <laughs> hey guys we'll be back yeah <laughs> hold, hold down the fort yeah they're so awesome. is she a senior your daughter yeah she what, is. where do they go to school uh bella goes to plano east okay okay, okay. Yeah. yeah and then murphy middle yeah. and he mitch was a student council officer two years <sighs> two years running and so hopefully even though i'm not going to be, I mean, hopefully I'll be there, but I'm going to, he's going to still do everything that I want her to have the best senior year and I want him to have the best um, seventh grade year. And I don't, I, and I think they will like there, we won't let this get in the way. We'll just thrive through it, push through it. And in the end, we'll, you know, I always say I'm not bitter. I'm only better. Like, I'm not going to look back and be like, really, did this just happen? Like, did I really, am I really looking for a third transplant right now? And of course that comes out. Sometimes I'm just like, I'll be, you know, I have so strong my my blog on Facebook and I'll be reading the comments and they're just so beautiful and people are so supportive. And then they'll just be like, I know you've got this. Mm-hmm. I know you can get a third. And I'm like, wait, I'm getting a third? <laughs> like, oh. you know, it's just like, yeah. you're, I mean, I'm so in robot mode sometimes that um, I, I like when I start hearing the things that I say out loud, like, like, like oh, I'm getting a third. I'm like, my brain and my body kind of all come together. Like, wait, what? So yeah. I just, it's like you have to almost just be in robot mode to get through what we're about to endure um and i mean again and we're kind of in this unknown kind of journey right now and so it is what we make of it right so i'm in charge of this like i've got this it is unknown but i'm going to write it to how i want it um and just do the best i can so when i look back at this journey which i've done in the past my last two times it's amazing because you're just like I'm proud of myself for handling it that way. So right. right now I'm like, okay, so how do I handle this situation where I look back and be like, okay, you got, you did this the right way. You handled it the right way. And then what's also really cool is when you look back in hindsight at the first transplant, second transplant, um, the pregnancies, it's like, you see God mm-hmm. all through mm-hmm. it. You're just like, I didn't know what was going on right then, but now I'm like, oh, wow. Like he just yeah. showed up like through the whole thing. Um, and sometimes you're not aware of it. And then sometimes you are. But when you look back, you see it. And it's the coolest thing ever. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you know how many third transplants have been done all over the world? I want to say, well, I know Duke has done 12. But I want to say it's like 23 or 32 or something like that. Very in low the, yeah. Very low. Very low. Yeah, let's just say not very many people. It's, it's like it's my flex. Rare. You know, yeah. I think it's funny. I'm like, yeah, my flex is that uh, I'm gonna get a third. I mean, that's so sad, but I mean, yeah. But the number nine. Yeah, she's I mean <laughs> no, and she's so awesome. And um there is something I always say like about like, six to fibrosis children and, and just in general, like we've just we're kind of born fighters and like when you see cf babies and you're just like they're just they're always, there's just something about them they're, i mean i think all children that are dealing with something it's the most beautiful thing to see them fight and endure because all i know that they are gaining so much strength from it mm-hmm. and I, I know that maybe not all moms want to look at it that way but when your baby is fighting for their life they are i promise you they are like gaining so much strength and they will evolve into this amazing um, strong being and um and that's how I have to look at it is like again six fibrosis is not my vulnerability it is my strength because it has made me who I am today awesome man. 
when I first met Allison, I never forget it. She was two, 18 months or something. Yeah. And I said, hi, how, I think I said, how old are you? But she was so used to having it. So she said, oh, I have 65 roses. Yeah. That's what she told me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, I, I remember looking at her mom so confused. I had not known what it was. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah, because 60, but, so. So, so for six fibrosis, when we were babies, we can't say six yeah. fibrosis, and um, so we say sixty fibrosis, fibrosis yeah. and that they did a whole, um, they do a whole charity work yes. on that, and I, yeah, and I, it is, it's just, um, children are resilient, and um, see if babies are cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. for sure, I love that, <laughs> and I think how you are so strong in the yoga and everything. I mean, that keeps you strong, and yes. but not everybody can do that. I well, mean, I'll admit, like some of my stuff's a little crazy on the mat, and no one needs to do that. I just, I think again, sometimes yoga um, reminds my mind that I'm still alive. Is kind of like I'm like, okay, if I can get on my mat and still do some inversions and some get upside down, even though I can barely breathe through it, I'm still doing it. And so yoga kind of reminds me, like, hey, I'm still alive. I'm still here. If I can, you know, get on my mat and move, um, and that just keeps me strong until it's time to when. That's the thing too is like I have to be strong for that table. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they you know cut me open, look so yeah, it's just like these dance oh. moves. Oh. <laughs> I have to show. <laughs> I wanted to look up her and <laughs> look at yeah. this. And I, love I it. mean, this is so dancer beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, dancing. So I was a raiderette. Okay, and yeah. so and yoga just kind of transitioned into that for me because I couldn't run. I mean, right. I didn't have the lung power to do a lot of like biking or I mean just. But I could do yoga. Right. And it's still, there was breathing involved. And it's what mentally kept me strong, too. Yeah, I think the mental aspect. I'm a hu- I mean, I love yoga. If I could do it every single day. do you, Are you able to do it now? And well, so actually I did yesterday. Just did oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, I just was wondering with yeah, no, I, what well, you have going it's on. It's different. So okay. every, so what happens, and this happens. So I, I did a post about it yesterday. Um, so um, six fibrosis or the transplant journey it's taken my practice away from me a few times because what happens, I mean, because you understand with yoga, like you'll nail a pose, mm-hmm. and but you have to work on it all the time. All the you, time. Or you'll lose it. Yeah. Um, so when I um, was doing my transplant afterwards, like I was doing handstands and like, you know, what is it, presses. And, yeah. And I can do like still like a pinch of press right now and I can, you know, be upside down and do lotus and things like that. But um, when you are out doing the transplant and healing, You'll get back on the mat and you've oh, lost it all. Oh, yeah. yeah. But oh. I, so it's been taken away from me twice. Um, and, but, and it's going to, I'll probably lose it again, but I will find it again back on the mat. Um, Cause I know I'm capable of doing it. I just have to find that strength again. And, and then that challenge, it keeps you moving. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and the breathing and it's very peaceful too. Yeah. Well, it quiets your mind. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, really? Well, well yeah, so, it's yeah. the meditation kind of the breathing part. That's why me and Hope always cry. I'm like, why am I crying? I'm laying here. I don't even know what happened. what's happening. I was having, I'm not even sad. And then you just lay there and I'll look at her. I'm like, I'm crying. She's like, me yeah. too. I cry like every class. Especially if you do a lot of hip overorders, mm-hmm. we carry a lot of emotions in our hips. Um, we carry a lot of emotions all over our body. And so yoga is really good at just like opening that up again. And next thing you know, you I'm are crying. crying in Shavasana. Mm-hmm. But um, I will say too, some of the stuff I do like inversions, so you're up at you're upside down and really there's not much you can think about but just breathing and being <laughs> upside down. So I recognized like afterward I'm like, why do I feel so calm? And then I realized like I didn't think about transplants, I didn't think about diseases, I didn't think about dying. I all I cared about was just getting upside down and nailing the pose. And so to quiet your mind, even for just a minute. Um, I mean, they say meditate 10 minutes a day and just quiet your mind. Like, mm-hmm. get it to shut up. Because, you know, how <laughs> annoying is our mind sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how, does, how is your mind at night? Is that a... Um, that, yeah, that's a hard one. Struggle with. Yeah, there's there's times that he's woken up on accident. I don't know why. Like, you would just wake up. But it would just be because <laughs> I hit him. Because I was like, I would be laying in bed and like... So much is going on in my mind, and I'm like, "Oh, babe, you were you need like you weren't breathing right. You need to wake up." And then we talk, and like, so yeah, like there's times that you're my. I mean, that's when I I do have um, I listen to a lot of prayer. Um, I guess it's like a a prayer app, mm-hmm. and I put that on a lot. That helps. Um, it'll just, like read the Bible for you. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and that it really does help. Um, it helps you fall back to sleep. So you kind of just. Falling asleep, listening to God's stories, and that helps a lot. So, I mean, you just you have to control your mind because 
like he says, we have to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because if I start thinking about what I have to do in the next, like, like, am I going to survive the table? Am I even going to get a transplant? Are they going to say no? Am I going to wake up tomorrow and not be able to breathe? I mean, because that's just, but, and I think we all have that in some way. I mean, we all endure, life is not easy for anyone. Like, life is not easy. And it's all different for everybody. But it's still a fight that we're all fighting in the end, you know? (laughs) I think it's amazing that you, um, are so faithful because I feel like I see that is amazing and I always see that in people who are strong in faith no matter what they've gone through and I've we've had some people here we've met some people who've gone through horrendous things I mean really really awful Um, but the people who have faith and then they seem to get through it a lot better Mm -hmm. Um, not that it's easier but they have that support and um, have you ever felt angry with God that's a really good question (laughs) so I think so what you're saying, too, about the people that have faith when they're enduring this, um, I see him and I feel him, especially in my wars. Like Mm -hmm. I can I can feel him. And it is it's just very peaceful. Like even in the second transplant, I don't remember much. I just remember being really peaceful. Mm -hmm. And this is actually kind of an interesting story. My friends will. This is a funny story that my friends think are funny. They think it's funny. I don't remember it. But um, they were always playing Christian music in the background. And like Scott would play. Like, they would just play Christian music for me. Well, one day, Courtney was like... Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, and we, they would play <laughs> Pride and Prejudice for me, which I love. That's my favorite movie. My daughter and I favorite Aww. movie. But, um, so they would play Christian music. Well, Courtney one day was like, she likes that one song with Kesha. It's like, you know, prayer. Yeah. Like, so one oh. song. And so she's like, let's change it up. Let's put that song on. And they said that I immediately got up and said, this is devil music. I don't remember this. This is the devil's music. Please stop. And then... <laughs> And then went back. And so the Courtney's like, turn it off, turn it off. Because like my blood pressure went up. Oh my God. And I think I was just so close to him. Like I was probably like hanging out in heaven. And then God was like, "Um, no, no, guys, uh, we don't play that here. You know? (laughs) So we went right back to oceans. <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, but I mean, isn't that crazy? It's like your, crazy. Your, my, my spiritual state was just, again, I don't remember anything, mm-hmm. but I was just a naturally calm because I do believe he's carrying you through that. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, he was, he was, and about your, what, like about you being mad. Yes. I yeah. get mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think I would be human if I didn't, but it's right. usually when I have no control over the pain or the breathing those times like when I'm laying in bed and I am just like, I can hear my breath. So I'm, right now I'm doing okay and I'm stable, but there are times when I'm wheezing and mm-hmm. I I cannot breathe and I'm, I mean, and I'm just laying here and I'm just like, really? Like, really? Like, uh-huh. I, I cannot do that. Been enough and so enough. I've, I've learned to just, okay, I'm giving, this is the coolest thing too, is when I am mad and he doesn't care. He's not going to be mad at me for being mad. He gets it. But I just, I'm like, all right, I'm giving this all to you right now. I am, I am giving you all of this. Like I'm mad. Like I'm yeah. take it. Like I don't, I don't want to feel this way anymore. You know. And somehow, like a peace goes over me. He's like, all right, I got this. You know. Wow. This. He's like putting it on his shoulder, and then I'm like, oh, okay, because he is there. You know. I mean, he's there all the time. And I do believe too with Christianity and being having faith. Um, sometimes, especially when I'm sick, it is a feeling like I can feel him. Mm-hmm. But when I'm actually doing better, it's more of a choice. Because faith is, um, I truly believe, it's a choice, not a feeling. Yeah. You have to dis- you have to choose to follow him and have blind faith. And um, and when I always choose him, it always works out. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's not why I choose him. Because I know, like, in his, it's all his will. And if he decides to take me tomorrow, then I'll actually probably be a lot easier, you know. But um, so it just, it's just, it's a faith. It's, yeah. Yeah. Touch a little bit on your five friends. Oh, yeah, so you are, well, um, so you want to say their names or you know who all my friends are? Ashley, that? Courtney, Brittany, Amy, <laughs> Ashley, Courtney, Brittany, Amy, and uh, and me because there's five. Oh, yeah, you're <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> I know I I'm forget? not forgetting somebody. Um, and they're so we've been best friends since we were little. Um, they've been like because it was cystic fibrosis, I was hospitalized a lot. Um, so <laughs> there'd be times that. I, we'd be teens in the hospital and we'd be like literally nurses having to come in and be like, guys, seriously, like you people are trying to heal here. And we're like, we are too. We're just doing it through laughter. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we, um, so they were just, they've been there for me and they're the friends, like the ride, ride or die. And like, we joke, we're like, you know, like, okay, just bury the body. We'll ask questions later. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're that way. And 
um, I've just, God gave me this group of girls that know how to fight for me and know what I need. And I mean, when during my second transplant, Scott would coordinate with them. I don't know. Yeah, like, oh. I mean, they were amazing. I couldn't have done it without them. I mean, they've. <laughs> he's like i think what he has to go back to those times he's like yeah. to me i was asleep i'm yeah. like what's so hard guys i mean what i mean they, they have yeah, to... there is a little ptsd yeah i know like, <laughs> and i feel so bad because i'm all like what like no, it's outside. a real thing though yeah no i know like especially when beeping like you hear beeping when yeah. i'm in the hospital like if i'm just in the hospital well, when I hear other like if i hear other rooms beeping Mm. But, but the, her friends, like they, they rotated. They dropped their family. They all have families, kids, husbands, jobs, careers, and they dropped it. And whenever I needed somebody to be there, I mean, they wanted to be there, and they were gonna come either way. Yeah, I said yes or no. But uh, but they just they stepped up, and uh, you know, when I did have to come back to Dallas, or you know, just needed a break uh, to go rest. You know, because he never slept. Like they were there, so they would rotate. So they would have like they would each week someone would come and stay with me. Because this was, I guess, after the transplant. I don't know ever that much about before, um, but yeah, more for the most part, uh, just right before and then after. Yeah, and so they would take turns. So even during Christmas, I mean, this was during Christmas but and they the holidays came during the uh, testing. Did they? Because I had to leave for yeah, a couple days. Yeah, I remember they would wheel me around yeah. and they would try to get me to all the testing. Yeah, so they, but they would take turns. So they would all alternate because there was four of them. So for like months, like so one week, Amy would come, one week, Ashley would come, Courtney would come, Brittany, and they would just take turns because someone had to take care of me. Um, and my mom and dad, they, they can't exactly move around the hospital. So they were there for support, but they were the ones that were actually like my true caretakers. Mm -hmm. um, and they're the ones that, you know, got me on the list. I mean, like I, you know, I, because they got me through the testing and then afterwards. It's funny because, I mean, I'm pretty sure I was not easy. I mean, they would, and then the, there was, they were worried too because I did have a stroke and um, they were worried I was a vegetable. And so they had some really hard times because Scott was, got the flu. <laughs> and so oh, he no. was sick. And um, then they get this one doctor comes in and they're like, they're like, like he's like touching me and like and I'm not responding and they're like I'm sorry but she's a vegetable like <gasps> she's not he said yeah that? yeah and my friends were like like so they had to gather together and they were because they were like how do we tell this to Scott and they were, and then but Ashley was like and they were decided they're like no this is not this is not it she is in there like she yeah. is in there we're not gonna take that is what um that's not it and then of course so like later on I think someone was brushing my teeth. And I bit down on the toothbrush and they're like, and I was just like, stop, you know, they're like, oh, they're like, oh, she's in there. Yeah, she's, <laughs> like, she's so in there. And like, so they started seeing me and see, like, as I healed my body, like my brain was healing and everything started to heal. They started to see my little feistiness and they're like, she's in there. She's fine. And, um, and sure enough, like, I'm fine. <laughs> I, I think you were healing from, I think you were healing from stroke. You know? Yeah. And that was a lot to do with it. Like I had that Chateau and <laughs> yeah so i i mean she wasn't seeing and i knew she wasn't seeing and so i i i thought she was blind after the stroke because they would put the light up to her and i was like okay so she's but i had no idea she didn't know right because i mean at that point you weren't communicating very much at all and uh so you know i spent three or four days thinking okay she's gonna be blind that's okay like that's fine <laughs> like and i had to tell the doctors that too like look She's got a support system. It doesn't matter if she's blind or not. We can still transplant her. It was after oh, the wow. ECMO. Um, but anyway, so I'd kind of, I'd say come to terms with that. But at least I had. But no one had said it physically out loud. Nobody had said it out loud, but the doctors had come in. And I could, you know, I could tell what they're thinking or doing. And finally, one day, I'm, I'm walking to the hospital. And this this nurse had been working a couple of different nights. And I kind of knew him. And he's like, I need to talk to you. And he took me aside into this room. He started crying and told me that he's like, I think your wife is blind. <laughs> Poor guy. I, oh, and I started God. hugging him. And I was like, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Yeah. Like, we've got this. We got this. So it just kind of shows like, like the, the so all the nurses and doctors, how much they cared and not, you know, about the family and obviously Selwa and. But it, it was cool, though. He was right um, in thinking, because I didn't know I was blind. So what happened, I mean, now obviously I'm not, because my my brain healed. But um, what 
So I wasn't seen. And I didn't even know that. Like, so your mind will, like, to protect you will make you think you're seen. So to a point where he was actually getting in a pretty a bad argument with a doctor because the doctor felt like Scott, because Scott would, like, if something was wrong, he would find someone to call. He would figure something out. I love and, it. Yeah. And so this doctor kind of felt like Scott had overstepped him and talked straight to the I authority. I did overstep him. Well, I mean, because I mean, he was, Scott was worried. Anyways, but, and so they're having this argument. And I re- this is like one of my first memories um, after, because I was like basically from November, I don't remember anything for like five, four months. I don't know. You I, don't? Like, well, yeah, like to the point where I'd be like, I'm like, why aren't we watching Christmas movies? I don't understand. And Scott's like, babe, it's January. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, it. I'm like, wait, but we're going to watch Elf, right? You know, anyways, but so they're, they're um, having a, a, you know, they're an altercation. Heated but it's, discussion. He did, yes. And, and it's funny because Scott was like, you know what? We're going to have this conversation, but we're not going to have it in front of her. We need to step outside. And I was like, you're not having it in front of me. Like in my mind, I remember thinking like, but you're not having it in front of me. You're not even in the couldn't room because I couldn't see them. And um, so I didn't get that until later we talked about it. And I was like, so wait, so that time that you were fighting with, I don't even remember who. Dr. A. Well, yeah, so you, um, I mean, you were there. He's like, yeah, we were like right in front of you. And that just shows you. So you're, and so he was really adamant to the nurses, to everyone, to the doctors. We we're not telling her. She's blind. Not we're not going to tell her until she. Maybe I don't know. Like till she figures well, it out. I just, you I, you needed to have some. You needed to kind of regain your strength physically and mentally before yeah. you take something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think if you had told me when I was, I don't think maybe I wouldn't have recovered. Maybe I would have stayed in that blind state. But my brain healed my eyes because it was. It wasn't that like I was blind, but my brain was damaged. Right. So once my brain healed, I could see. <sighs> Um, but yeah, so I mean, it was just all when those was little partially. things. When partially, yeah. when did it come back? Uh, so it was after Christmas, and you were. Oh, I, I remember, know. The I can remember. Sock, the yellow yeah, sock. so I remember the physical trainer came in, and she was like, "So, what color are your socks?" And I looked down, I'm like, "Ew, they're an ugly yellow. Like, why am I oh, wearing God. these ugly it was mustard?" The biggest relief. And I didn't know, oh, but, I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, but I'm like, like um, but I'm like, why are they asking me that? She's like, "What color is my shirt?" And I'm like, "Maroon." Like, what? And then they would be like, they're like, what year is it? I'm like, why are you asking me that? Like 1991? Like 90, what did I say? You said 1908 one time, <laughs> uh, 1997 one time. Uh, yeah, yeah and like, they'd be like, who's the president? I'm like, why are you asking me that? But then I'd be like, I don't know. You know, I mean, I had to relearn uh, how to walk, how to, wow. think, like, I had to relearn how to, like, they asked me to like write a clock and like draw a clock. And I was like, okay. I mean, again, these are all things that I didn't understand like why? why they're asking me that, but then I couldn't do it, and like like I'd put all the numbers all on one on like one on side one side, and then and, um and that's not the the lung transplant. I mean, I mean the, it is, but the it's, it's the stroke. stroke. Well, just you know, like my whole body just yeah. dying and then coming back to life. Were you in the room when she said yellow socks? Yeah. Oh, oh were you? you did you there? take uh, a deep breath? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. Tell you. I didn't even understand. Was that was the second. first moment you knew that she wasn't blind? Um, no, I think I had already kind of. Oh, okay. I think I had already kind of Got felt right. like maybe it was coming back a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that's clear. But that was a, like still yeah. pretty. Yeah. So was it just like an elephant moment. in the room? Like everyone knew but didn't want to say yeah. kind of thing. And then mm-hmm. I finally confirmed it. And I just remember, she's like, well, what color is my shirt? And I was just, again, so confused <laughs> for, <laughs> for a while. Oh. Like I didn't understand why I couldn't walk. Like, I mean, me. I'm like, what? And like to the point where I'd be like, I'll just crawl to the bathroom. Like I didn't because they'd be like, let me take you to the bathroom. I'm like, no, like, I'll go to the bathroom. Yeah. I'll just crawl there. I mean, that was just my mindset was always still wanting to be very independent. Very feisty and yeah. stubborn. But I, I think that's, <laughs> that's why really I'm good, yeah. good, good, good yeah. um, you know. things for you because that's what yeah. you need. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And, then, and then I have him. So yes. Keep me going on those days that I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. And then he's like, yeah. And then, <laughs> all right. He's like, don't leave me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's the sweetest. Um, so these five friends, have you guys always gotten along? Oh, and that's, those are. Oh, those oh, are yeah. another. No, that's just, this is a part of the, um, that was the uh, photolanthropy. They did my story. Oh. But I do have, I should have brought oh, them a picture. I'll have to bring a picture. Yes. Yeah. 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 These are just, um. so. How funny that's five girls. Yeah, too. I know, right? They're really <laughs> sweet. Oh, that, they're yeah. amazing. Um, they did a story on me. And the photolanthropy is a really cool organization that tells people's stories that have right. endured. And um, so, yeah, no, but my five friends, uh, or I guess four friends, and then I'm the fifth, but um, yeah, they've... Oh, so you guys have five to 
get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Am I like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they've, I mean, again, they've, we were all, we all went to high school together, college together. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and that is so unusual. Yeah, it is, well, right. And I think it's because God knew I needed my girls like to get through all this. And, but um, do you know how hard it is sometimes for girls to get along, especially yeah. for that long? Well, I think we're all so different. And I think that helps, right? Like, you know, we're all, I gotta I have like the tall blonde and the tall brunette. And then we have Amy and I are like the short little ones. And, you know, Casey's the tall, another tall blonde. But we just, we're just all different. We all have our different personalities. And I think what we learn to do, and I think this is important, is like, yeah, we fought. And yeah, like we would get mad at each other, especially in college when we're all trying to learn who we are. Um, but we loved each other unconditionally. So it's like, yeah, that like she just like they accept me for who I am and I accept them. Like all the faults, everything. We're just like, we're in this world together, we're living this life together. And um, so we just love each other unconditionally. So and then it's like, hey, especially in college, like when someone made me mad or when I made them mad, they'd be like they'd call me out on my crap, you know, like so I can't act like that, you know. And so we just we're like sisters and um it's unconditional love. This, That's yeah. so awesome. And then it's, again, it's like, if if I didn't ask them to help me, I would get in trouble. You know? uh. It's like, I would be in trouble. And then they know how to, like, keep me going in the sense there's times that, like, if they know they haven't heard from me in a while or if something. And it usually is. It's because when you're not feeling good mm -hmm. and, and you're just like, you know, um, they'll, they'll be like, okay, we haven't heard. We're like, so, uh, like, how are you feeling? Like, you know. And then, like, just actually they're going to. I feel bad. They sent me a text today. They're like, hey, we want to come over and just check on you and just, like, let's keep you, your spirits up, you know. And um, so, yeah. We're... Are they all in Dallas? Um, now, except for my, Amy's in California. Okay. Um, but when we get together, we get together. Like, we try to see each other all together on Christmas. But um, and again, <clears throat> they all have families and they're all busy. But we just know how to still, we still keep, you know, texts or we'll, because it is hard. Like, you, mm -hmm. you start living your life or you're trying to keep your life <laughs> you're busy yes but, but i'm what's cool is so like again they're just like tell us what to do we're ready like yeah. we'll be on a plane in a second and that's such a comforting so like, september 4th yes is when you go to duke yes to be evaluated and then tell me what that evaluation looks like and these tests that you have to endure what do you all have to do for all that yeah do you want i mean i don't even remember the test the yeah, second so time around the, um they look basically look at every part of her body and just see how everything's functioning and you know, well, right, they'll like, do they'll do gastro tests. Um, they they, do, they stick like a, a like a wire all the way down to my throat, down to here, and keep it for twenty four hours and they, like read this. So there, I mean, and when you can't breathe, like just have. Yeah. I mean, ugh. they'll do a lung function test and walk like walk tests. Walk tests and, um, to see how you and heart stuff. Uh -huh, they test your heart. They look at your heart. Well, and they just have to see that everything yeah. is strong enough to survive. Right. So it's kind of the like they're not going to, and it lets, they even do colonoscopies, breast exams, things like that, just because they're not, I mean, if I have cancer, obviously they wouldn't give me new lungs. So it's like they have, I have to prove that I'm worthy, which gosh, you know, I'm not, but I, I just think, um, because it's such a, such an amazing gift that you know, people do decide to give. Yeah. And, um, so yeah. Um, so yeah. So course. it'll be. Uh, it's I five think days it's for Duke. Five days. They'll like, try to compile it all within five days. When we went for the second transplant, it was about two weeks. Yeah. Because they have to coordinate with all these different doctors right. and their offices. So yeah. we'll be there for five or six days, and uh, we're going to stay pretty much on campus. And we'll just do appointment after appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can do this. Like it, Again, I do. I mean, again, I, I like to look back at this. And all my journeys um, is like we had a good attitude through it. And so I'm going to continue to choose that attitude. And I might get mad every once in a while and be annoyed. But in the end, I'm I'm going to have a good attitude about it because I can choose that attitude. That's so, you know what? I can't control anything, right? Yeah. Nothing. But one thing I can control is how I decide to look at this We're and deal go with spend this. Spend a week together yeah. in North yeah. Carolina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and we'll, fi we'll find our ways. I mean, like we we find our ways to have fun anywhere and like love each other and just as long as we're together. Um, I mean, I can remember one year it was after my first transplant. 
And we all hung out. It was the kids and I, and we did 4th of July in mm-hmm. the hospital. Mm-hmm. And oh. he's like bought decorations for oh. the hospital. And we watched the fireworks from the window of the hospital room. And the kids were like, we're digging. I mean, I, you don't need much. You yeah. know, you just, you just need to have a good perspective, a good attitude. And you can make the best out of anything. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's a choice. And I'm, I'm not going to choose to be pissed off and like grumpy. I don't want to be that. Mm-hmm. That's not me. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'll have my grumpy days and he'll get to see that and I'll just be like, ah, you know, but. Well, yeah, we all have those. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm allowed, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how you do it this way. It's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're all saying it's such an inspiration for so many people on so many levels. And then you wanted to touch organ transplantation too, like yeah. talk about the gift that people give and then i don't know if you want to talk about your first one and yeah and um, well so it's not all my story um in the sense that the people that gave like the girl that gave me her lungs um such a just a a beautiful thing that she did um and the family was such a beautiful family it was just really hard because i knew them um because we did get to meet each other and they were just amazing um but then i lost her daughter's lungs and that and i feel like she had to kind of lose her daughter all over again because of me and it's just such a um i don't feel i it's just so hard because um like they've given me such a beautiful gift and then i lost it and um and i you know you just don't never ever feel worthy of a gift like that and um you just won't and i know and it's such a hard dynamic accepting lungs in the sense that so there's a family so for the two times that I've done this there's a family that's grieving and they just lost someone and then on the other side here we are um just you know thankful for this gift and we're celebrating because I'm alive and that dynamic is so hard to mentally wrap your head around um and I had to I had to learn to look at this as because for so long I couldn't help but feel like I'm taking their place and and you can't look at it as, oh, they died because of me. I mean, there's a two separate journeys here. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, you know, passed on and chose to be selfless and give a gift of life. And I was blessed to have that um, that gift. And I've got so many good years out of both gifts. And um, I hope, again, to have to, um, you know, go through the process again of feeling not worthy again. But... Um, thankful and blessed that someone chose to be selfless and um i always i look at it this way there's this really pretty cartoon it's really dramatic it's actually really sad cartoon but it's um an an older like a a man in a coffin and he's holding on to all his organs like you know just holding on to you know underground and then there's this little kid on top that's like you know with this hospital thing and he's looking down at these organs that probably could have saved his life and um I just, and I feel like that little kid, you know, sometimes and just really blessed that someone chose to, to give the gift of life. And that's, it's, it's again, it's, it's deep. <laughs> it's but really that's hard. what you just said. I mean, they are gone anyway. So why not give them to yeah. somebody and give someone a chance? Yeah. Well, I mean, and the, the thing is the person that the, the, the organ giver, um, they're probably actually, you know, loving life up in heaven, right. but there's the family that is grieving them. And that's what my heart, um, my heart goes out to them that they're grieving and, and we're on the other side and we're just so blessed and thankful that I'm still alive. And then I, you can't help but take the twist mm-hmm. of, you know, I, they're not here, but I am. And I, I have to learn to separate that. Um, and it, it, I mean, now, like after a few, you know, six years of having, um, someone else's organs um, in my body to keep me alive. I have to just be grateful for it. I would never want to um, make it be a negative thing. So I just um, I'm very blessed and thankful, and I just have to just say my prayers and for the family that is going through the loss. And um, it's hard. So, I mean, they'll always have that loss that they're going to endure and grieve. And I mean, it's a hard it's a hard dynamic. I'm I have a question. It may be really <laughs> stupid, but. Um... With the new lungs, do you still have to do all the breathing treatments and the the vest and all that? Yeah, Does so, that start all over? No, so um, so you get the new lungs and you don't have CF in your lungs anymore. 
So I don't have to do I treatments. Know. No, it is a whole different life. Hey, that's what a, I was wondering. That's so crazy. It's, um, it's a whole different life in the sense. Like, so I went from fighting to breathe, like doing lung treatment after lung treatment, clearing my airways um, to then getting new lungs. And it's like, wait, I don't have to sit like four hours a day doing lung treatments. Wow. Um, but right now, because my lungs are so vulnerable, I am doing lung treatments again just to keep them as healthy as possible um, until, we, you know, to stay as stable as I can. But, yeah, it, it was it was, it was was amazing because I went wow. from three years old to, I guess, when how old was I the first time I got lung? Like, was 39? It, thir- no. 30. No, that was 39 second. So the first, oh yeah, yeah, yeah but still, 30, yeah, 38, 30, I guess, yeah, so. But so for 38 years, I was doing full, like hours and hours of lung treatments to keep my airways clear. Um, I mean, that's like half a day, you yeah. know, and then having so much freedom. I mean, because health is freedom, and um, I love that freedom, and I've got to experience it a few times, and I'm going to still, I'm still healthy enough to feel enough freedom, but it is hard because you kind of are, Right now, I'm kind of trapped in this body mm-hmm. um, that only lim- allows me to do so much. And um, I want that 100% back yeah. so I can just live my, like, have, like, do what I'm meant to do and, um, and not let it hold me back. So, and I don't let it hold me back. Just have a lot of limitations. Of it. Yeah. And, well, I always say, I, mean, I know that everybody has bad days, <laughs> but I always say I get very frustrated with some people because I think the healthy, like, I get it. We all have bad days, but there's nothing that can compare to being like a health, like having that health, that blessing. Like you're so lucky that you can, that you are here and that you don't feel bad either. Mm -hmm. Like feeling, not feeling well sucks. Like I think I'm like, I'm the worst patient ever. Like if I'm like, have a cold, I'm pissed off. Right. No, I get it. I get it. I can't imagine like feeling you should yucky. Feel pissed off. No one <laughs> no. wants to be sick, and no. that's a, and that's a natural thing. And just because you know a cold and, or just having a lung transplant, it's all the same. It all that's sucks. Not. No, no. It, it is. It, it is. And I no. I do look at it. Uh, but I do look at it as um, if you can take my story mm-hmm. and you can look at it and just take it and like I'll do the heavy lifting, mm-hmm. right? I'll do the I'll do the transplants. If you can look at my life and be like. I get a little perspective from mm-hmm. it. And I mean, like you don't have to have the two lung transplants yeah. to get this perspective of yeah. just loving life, being thankful to breathe and not, I mean, you know, and um, that's kind of where I am. I'm like, let me do the heavy lifting yeah. so you can gain some perspective. Well, and the choosing to be happy or choosing yes, choice. to the choice. I, we said, we talk about that a lot, a lot. Um, Cause you have to be reminded too. Yeah. Like I've, I've had two lung transplants, maybe about to have a third and I still have to be reminded to be thankful and appreciative of my breath. I mean, so it's something that we have to discuss all the time. I think that is one of the things that got, gets me the most when you write. First of all, she's such a beautiful writer. Oh, but thank you. when she talks about the breath, this one breath and how we take this for granted, like we're just breathing. And she is thankful for every breath she can take. Well, and it's just incredible to me. Well, I, I do like to analyze the breath because... I, every breath I take, I feel, and mm. it's not very satisfying, um, but I, 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 I really pay attention to breath. So I imagine it and I want people to imagine it, like, you know, take that inhale, which mine are short, my, you know, but I want you to take that deep, deep inhale, feel the oxygen, you know, or like just the air coming into your lungs and, um, and like feeling your body accept that air and take it all in and like breathe life into your body and then let it all out and let it go. And it's just such a satisfying feeling. Um, and I, I, I don't have that <laughs> right now. And I know what it feels like. And um, like just taking deep breath, thinking about it. But um, I want that back. And I but I want people to understand how special that is and how how good it feels to just take that deep breath and not take it for granted. Yeah. <laughs> is everyone taking a breath right now oh, I know uh, are y'all like, breathing <laughs> the whole time <laughs> yeah. well I always sometimes I'll ask I'm like take a deep breath like how does that feel what does that feel like I want to be oh. reminded um, but I'll get it back and and I will not take it for granted <laughs> I know I don't think you do ever actually yeah I mean I don't see that with you 